Hello and welcome to another complete OCR GCSE PE lesson. In this video we'll be covering the fourth learning objective in chapter one, the structure and function of the skeletal system, which is all about the types of movement at hinge joints and ball and socket joints. So hinge joints are only capable of flexion and extension. So flexion at hinge joints can be defined as a bending motion that results in a decrease in the angle around a joint. So flexion can be seen at the knee when preparing to strike a football and at the elbow when preparing to shoot in basketball. Extension is the opposite movement, so a straightening motion that results in an increase in the angle around a joint. So at the knee this can be seen when taking off in high jump or jumping in any sport for that matter and at the elbow when spiking a volleyball. So ball and socket joints, that is the shoulder and the hip, are capable of a wide range of movement in multiple planes. So they can produce flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, rotation and circumduction. So at the shoulder, flexion involves moving the arm forwards and upwards, for example underarm bowling in rounders. At the hip, it involves moving the leg or the thigh forwards and upwards, for example raising the knee when sprinting. Extension, the opposite movement, involves moving the arm downwards and backwards at the shoulder, for example pulling the arm through the water when performing the front crawl. At the hip, it involves moving the thigh downwards and backwards, for example, pushing off the board in long jump when taking off or propelling the body forwards when running. Next, we have abduction, which can be defined as movement of a limb, that is an arm or a leg, away from the midline of the body. This can be seen at the shoulder joint when making a save to the side of the goal in football and at the hip joint when performing a split in gymnastics. The opposite movement of abduction is adduction, which is the movement of a limb towards the midline of the body. This can be seen at the shoulder during a golf swing and at the hip when bringing the legs together when performing the breaststroke. Next is rotation, which is when a bone turns about its longitudinal axis, and we'll look at the axes of rotation in topic 1.3. So rotation can be seen at the hip when opening the foot to control a pass with the instep in football, and that would be an example of lateral rotation, and at the shoulder when performing a forehand ground stroke in tennis, particularly if lots of topspin is being applied, and that would be an example of medial rotation. Note that you don't need to know the differences between medial and lateral rotation. The final type of movement that you need to know about is circumduction, which is essentially a combination of all the different types of movement possible at ball and socket joints. Flexion, extension, abduction, adduction and rotation. So circumduction can be defined as a continuous circular movement of a limb around a joint. Circumduction occurs at the shoulder when performing the butterfly stroke, bowling in cricket or serving in tennis, and at the hip joint when performing a high kick in taekwondo. Okay, so that was literally everything you need to know on the types of movement at hinge joints and ball and socket joints. Join me next time for the final learning objective in chapter one on the roles of ligaments, cartilage and tendons.